I have kept this message for some time and uh, I just want to let Nigerians know what God is trying to do so that they can rise up and pray. Remember, I really deeply have love for these two countries, Nigeria and Togo. I don't know for my country, Ghana. To be honest with you, the way I feel for Nigeria and Togo, I don't feel that for Ghana, I'll be honest. It doesn't mean when I come to Ghana, Ghana immigration deports me. I'm coming there. You can't deport me in Jesus' name. But I just love Nigeria and, and uh, Togo too much. I just don't know why. God has given me a job there to do, that's why. So he gave me that burden, that passion for the country. I want to see them succeed. And I'm telling you this, I've said it again in the prophecy before. God showed me that Nigeria would be a delight. If you remember, there was a time I gave a prophecy that Nigeria would be a delight. And I've, I will never re renege on that prophecy because it's true. God says Nigeria will be a delight. Many people will love to be a Nigerian. You will see. God has showed it to me. So those of you who are disrespecting Nigerians today, tomorrow you'll be ashamed. You'll be ashamed. Here's a country which is not even 70 years old and you're attacking them. Nigerians this, Nigerians that. Do you know their history? Have you been in Nigeria before? Do you have family members in Nigeria? Do you know what they go through back home? So please don't attack because you don't know. Nigerians, you are my friend. I love you. Thank God we are not a Liberians. Hallelujah. <laughs> to God be the glory. Hear me. I saw a strange thing about Nigeria, and I've said it to some of you before, but God has asked me to make it official so we can pray. So if you are in Nigeria, I need you to hear me clearly. God showed it to me before T.B. Joshua died. And you remember, I told you that as a result, he was going to kill some pastors in Nigeria, if you remember. But he asked me to make it personal so that we can send it to Nigerians and they will pray about their country. I was in Nigeria in a place called Lagos. Look, in that place, I, I, where I was, there was no sea. But for some reason, there was a water that turned like a sea from that place coming towards Togo. Because I know I was in a place called... Uh, Oshun, Oshun State. Oshun State is like uh, going towards a uh, sister where? Uh, 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 Ibadan, right? Oyo, Oyo is Ibadan, right? Oyo is Ibadan. So you go to Oshun, then Oyo, then Kwara, isn't it? Lagos State, Oshun State, Oyo State, then Kwara State. If you are going towards the Midlands, because that's where they took me to. So I was in a place called Oshun. It's, it's spelled A O S U N, isn't it? But it's pronounced Oshun. That's, that's what I want. So I was standing in a place called Oshun State. And as I stood there, the, that Oshun State, I don't think they have got water like the sea there. I don't think they do. But all of a sudden, I saw the water levels rising. And it became a tsunami of water. And the tsunami of water began to sweep from Oshun State towards Lagos State. And it swept everything on the way. And when you got to Lagos, the whole Lagos was underwater, submerged everything, bridges, everything, everybody died. But I, I can't swim in real life because I grew up in the forest area in People's Republic of Sampa. And so I can climb trees. So I'm supposed to be drowned in the water. But the ferocity of the water and the speed at which the tsunami was taking place was so high that I saw myself skateboarding. No, skate, uh, surfing. S like, surf, like surfing board. But it's like a skateboard. But it's short one, like a skateboard. And then I, was, I stood on it this way. And I was gliding on the water. Because it had four wheels. One, two, three, four wheels. On, so I was skateboarding on the water. Not, rather than surfing. Does it make sense? And there was a reason for that. Because the debris and the broken pieces of wood and sticks and trees would have poked me. So, and the speed to which it was sweeping. It was sweeping down towards Togo. I will explain this to you because when we got to Lagos, a whole of Lagos was taken by the water. Everywhere was taken. Sorry, buildings, everything was consumed. You can't see if anything like the time of Noah's flood. Then we got to a place called Bada Agri and the water calmed down like a dog. All of a sudden, everything calmed down. It was shocking. As if nothing happened. So, I waited for three days later and I had to come back to the city of Lagos to see what has happened. And everything had gone. There was hardships in Lagos. People were sleeping under bridges. To the point where even uh, wash and we are. Nigerians will understand it because it's your, it's, your, it's your message. If you're in South Africa, it's not your message. So you don't understand wash and we are. Wash and we are means use clothing. Huh? Became like a delight. Because I saw people had brought in uh, relief goods, which was youth clothing. And the Nigerians were you know, rushing it. Because they, they had nothing. People were sleeping in the mud under the overhead bridge, overhead bridge, oh, 
and, and it's a muddy the 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 the, the clay the clay the, it was a red clay uh, you know soil and it's and so it doesn't dry quicker so and people are sleeping there. it was so funny i was watching that thing i said lord but why did this talk about the agri he said but the agri has a history in the life of nigeria in but the agri more blood has been shed in but the agri more prayer has been raised did you hear that in but the agri more blood has been shed but in but the agri more prayer has been raised in other words, more, more curses was pronounced in Badagri. And I think that more prayer has been raised in Badagri. I don't know it, but hear me. So I saw the sandy, sandy, uh, it's as if Badagri is more like below sea level, more sandy, white sandy beach. Okay? Coconut trees and some shrubs, like mangroves, mangrove shrubs. Okay? And then the law says here, many, many people were transported here to Europe and to the diaspora. And when they were going, they cursed the land and cursed the white man. Are you listening? But over time, when Christianity came in into Nigeria around 1935-ish, people prayed a lot in this area to remove a curse. And because of that prayer, that's why I did I I, I stopped the waters here. But meanwhile, I saw Bada Agri as a beach with coconut trees there. So the tsunami is supposed to take place from the beach to the city, but it took place from where there's no water to where there's water, the, like a reverse tsunami. And today, this morning, God said to me, it's time you give the message and explain to them that I am about to sweep over the land. Like a tsunami sweeps over a city. And I'm going to remove any pastor that did not do my business and my will. And another thing, the reason why there was that tsunami was because it says, Nigerian pastors have allowed occultism into my church. Not all of them, but the majority of them. And because of that, I'm going to punish the land. So that was the reason for the hardships. So the message is so that the church will rise up. If you are a true pastor of God, pray, pray because don't think that it will not affect you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because those church members they will come to you and give you troubles, and you have to now do deliverance. Ah, it would waste your time. You will be tired. You will be exposed. So pray that Papa have mercy. You kill the pastors, not the church members. Let the pastors die so that you can raise that good shepherds for the church in Nigeria, so Nigeria can be able to stand. Because God has sent his son in Nigeria so seriously. God, can I tell you something? God is going to bring some setting fire. I see in, in, in my eye. Uh, you know, when you, you know, there's a Nigerian pepper, which is more pepper than the. They can say in Nigeria, they call it a certain hot pepper that the Yoruba people eat a lot. It's very, very, very hot. It's like a small pepper. Very, very small. Very, very hot. I see it in my eye. The Lord say it's not pepper. The Lord say that's a fire. The fire. I'm bringing Nigeria a fire of grace, fire of an awakening, fire of a, you know, you know, a great revival. Nigeria will see the Lord's glory again. But until the glory comes, God is going to punish the land and clear the land. But you will see a tsunami of devastation taking place in the land. And so if that people died, it's because God is punishing, punishing the land. So some people are innocent, but they will die in the midst of all this chaos. You know, so all this full of menace you are seeing, it's all part of God, God protesting. And all this Boko Haram and ISIS, God is protesting. But remember, Lagos State, especially Lagos, Lagos State, you are going to see God's punishment so seriously to shock you. Lagos State. Then, when that thing is done, God will rewire the land again for great awakening. So, Nigeria will see an awakening. But please, pastors, be careful, be watchful. If you are truly from God, start praying for the churches in Nigeria. Because Lagos State, especially, will see a serious punishment from God before the great awakening of Nigeria starts. That's a timeline I'm giving you. So when you see troubles in Lagos and God punishing people and see you know physical disasters taking place in Lagos and pastors died anyhow, it's a sign that a timeline is coming. Nigeria is about to wake up again. And the whole world will see the glory of Nigeria. Nigeria will be respected by the whole world. You will see. I saw I saw the first UN Secretary General and who had more more mouth to speak boldly. Huh? Uh, a black man from Nigeria. We know that there was a Ghanaian black man, Kofi Annan, but he was soft. God would raise up a Nigerian, a U.S. Secretary General. His, 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 his surname begins with an O. I will not give the rest. There's an, an O, an S, a U inside. The rest I will not give. And you will be powerful in UN. Or because he's Nigerian. And you will see all this just because God has lifted up his hand. So please, Nigeria, that's for you. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, beloved, I believe you have what the man of God has to say concerning the nation of Nigeria and the vision and plan that God has towards Nigeria and what went down in centuries. 
as you all know i'm not the one that is gonna say it but they are very very strong words and prophecy that i just have my like the way i feel after hearing what he has to say i just want to share my opinion and all that with you guys this is an interesting message from god actually if this is what god wants for us the nation of nigeria may his will be carried out and all that like i said in my previous videos that there are a lot of prophecies that have been dropping back and front and all that we just pray that the will of god be done in our nation this is somebody that doesn't know nigeria this is somebody that has not been in nigeria and i know a lot of people will be like yes he can make research and all that he can get things uh, like if he wants to know anything about nigeria nigeria is an open book he sees it and all that and i will be like <laughs> are you sure that is the case because see god works in mysterious ways the ways of god are not the ways of man things that feel good to us may not feel good to god and there are things that god is doing to put a lot of things in place sometimes you have to go through fires and all that for god to show up for you and i feel like that is a situation nigeria is actually facing currently because as you all know, Nigeria is going through a lot. When I say Nigeria is going through a lot, Nigeria is actually going through a lot. Is it from 2015, 2014 that a lot of things went out of hand during um, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan when the Chibo guests went missing in the hands of Boko Harams and all that, killings and all that. Like I always say because I'm from in the middle bed so when i say i understand what it means for this flanny headsman book warrants to attack your homes and all that your community your village and a whole lot of people are out there suffering and all that believe me when i said i know what it feels for your loved ones to be killed people you grew up with family members and all that you wake up one morning you see flanny headsman attack and people were killed and all that it's so painful and it's so 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 heartbroken to, to hear those news sometimes you just burst out in tears and all that when you hear some certain kind of news and all that a community that was bubbling before you know you go there now it's full of grasses you can't even recognize your childhood home where you grew up anymore that is my own case and i'll say that if it is a test that god is actually putting us through then it's a strong one and i hope what god have in stock for us it's so mighty and high yes i believe and i know strongly that one day one day nigeria is going to be a nation that people are going to chip in from every part of the world because see to be in nigeria is not a day job honestly like uh if you have travel outside nigeria before you understand what i'm saying because you being in nigeria alone like it's like this charisma of hatred towards you this arrow of hatred fired upon you immediately oh but there are some people that are very very welcoming oh you nigeria i love nigerians this that 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 which i i really 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 appreciate those people for and all that when they they embrace you they, they they like it they appreciate and all that it's it's a whole bugging on it so we're going to talk about that topic in a different video but i'm just trying to tell you this that you see that all these things we are going through as a nation god should come to our aid because it's not easy anymore and it's very very heartbroken because a lot of people are losing their life on daily basis when it comes to the nation of nigeria and i know a lot of people want nigeria to be divided because they feel like it's not actually working for us anymore we want to go on our own and we have been fighting as you all know since the silver war you all know what has been happening in nigeria and what people are facing but it's just heartbroken and very very disturbing at the same time when you see people go through what they go through all in the name of oh i don't want this thing to happen i don't want that thing to happen i'm tired of her our political leaders are just so bad and this is something the man of god is just bringing us backward that there, there are a lot of sacrifice tears and blood that has went down in the soil of nigeria and all these things are just a reminder for us to have it in mind that when comes rain there will surely be a sunlight at the end of it so that is one thing we need to know and we need to position our mind and renew our mind that okay it's a phase we are going to come out of this phase one day it's a trial and we're going to come out of this trial okay just imagine during the 
slavery the, during the uh with the, the empire and all that there so if you think about people that lost their life people that were picked from their homes their village their heart to to this white man's land and the lake causes this person doing this to me you know that causes are still there like he says that when christianity came in as much as they won't pray but they still laws of the innocent still screaming on the air and all that and i began to understand some certain kind of things i know that this video may not probably sit with a lot of us i understand how you feel and all that yes because of the way things are going it's it's something but let us also know that see god cannot give you a battle that you he knows you cannot win i know a lot of people will be like hey why would god give you a battle that you like in the first place and all that why would god put you to such trials and all that see everything change during creation that is one thing you need to know if you saw during uh through the uh garden of eden adam and eve and all that a lot of people will be like why did god even uh create the serpent See, I always say it by that good and evil must work hand in hand for there to be balance in this world. That is it. If you have watched Avatar Korra, like the last urban that like you you understand what I'm talking about, like that it's some people see it as just a cartoon but you could learn a whole lot of things from there that was when i learned that because i remember uh zuko's uncle when he was asked he says that without good and without evil there will be no balance on the world because when they take evil from the the good it can't coexist and all that everything was falling in place so that is one thing i want us to know so you you cannot see that why did god created the serpent and all that see god knows a thing from beginning to end because he knows that this is how humanity is going to come into existence and this is the way it's going to go some people will tell you that oh when the other than if ate the apple and their eyes became open that was how god's plans now change god's plans never change it remains the same sometimes ways to your destination may be different you know that you're going to a particular village there are two entrances to this village you can use this other village to go to this village you can use this other one to go to so you can decide to pick which one but at the end of the day you're going to get to your destination definitely god knew that this is how humanity was going to be but he didn't know that this is the route that these people are actually going to take this is the route that they're going to take to get to that destination and it happens but he knew that these two routes this is how it's going to be at the end of the day so that is how it is so god doesn't make mistakes with things and i'm glad that somebody that it's a bit like he, he you could see that he knows what he's talking about and when god reveals things to you you are on top of your game you know what you're doing and you know what you're saying at the same time so let's just take it like this because god is in control god is in absolute control you may be facing a lot you may be going through a lot in nigeria currently and you feel like oh it's no war things are not going well anymore why is god why has god forsaken me why am i going through what i'm going through it's part of your destiny there's a destiny can be delayed, but it can never be changed. It's for you to pray that your destinies embrace you on time. See, there's this power that, you know, you can unlock and unlock things. And that is it. So just anything that belongs to you, you can command it to be yours today. You can command it to be yours in 100 years and all that. But if you don't live to see that and you say God has forsaken you, you suffer till death. But just learn the law of gravity. That is just it. So that is just the video that I say let me come here and share with you guys because it's an interesting one and it's very, very educative that I said, okay, let me come and share it with you so that you hear the voice of God from the man of God yourself and know God is doing with Nigeria. It's not over until it's over. So guys, that is just the video I just brought you away. But before I go, please, 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 if you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe, comment, like, share with family and friends so that you don't miss out on any of our content. And don't forget to turn on the post notification to get notified whenever we upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, I want to use this opportunity to say a very big thank you. Thank you for always tuning in and thank you for always watching our video. 
god bless you as you do that all the time so guys that is just a video i decided to share with you i hope you learned a lot and i hope you have hope that nigeria is going to be better one day and be stronger than the way it is because with god all things are possible because god is still in charge and god is still in control no matter what we are facing as a nation right now it will come to an end nigeria is going to be that you're going to be proud to be in nigeria you're going to wave that your international passport any embassies you enter any country you enter and sit i'm in nigeria with a proud voice because the will of god would definitely definitely come to pass so guys thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next one bye for now